People who canceled their wedding? Why? Story 1. My dad called off the wedding before he met my mom. He was with the woman who strongly urged him to marry. Basically, she just started planning the wedding without a proposal. And my dad went too far. One evening, he and his mother discussed what food would be served at the reception. So they asked my dad what he thought. Fried chicken or beef? To which my dad replied, I don't care which one you have because I won't be there. Edit. Apparently, she bought her own ring, too. Story 2. I was 18 and had just had a baby with my first boyfriend. Unfortunately, said Guy was abusive as a cow, but I put up with it because I didn't know any better and had no family to help me. The wedding was two weeks away. The invitations were sent out. I had my dress. Everything was ready to go. Then one night he started going crazy. You never know what caused it. And I was tired, so I didn't argue. And when I did not argue, he runs into my young son's room, wakes him up, pulling him out of the crib, and threatens to leave with him and never come back. As I'm on my knees, crying and begging him to give me the baby, while he holds the screaming baby over me like someone holding a piece of steak out of a dog's reach, I think twice about marriage. That night, I did everything I could to calm him down. And the next day, when he came home from work, he didn't even know where I had moved. He called his mother and told me if she had seen me. Fortunately, she didn't. In fact, she was in the process of facilitating my escape at the very moment he called. Make that guy up. Story 3. It's not really as bad as cheating on a husband, but my wife and I almost called off our wedding due to her mom being a completely controlling and uncompromising bad person. We were together for almost 10 years when we decided to get married. We both decided to forego a formal wedding and just elope and then have a celebration after the fact. With that settled, we decided to call our siblings and parents to let them know. My parents were thrilled and so was my brother, but when she called her parents, they flipped their cow. Eventually, they showed up at our house unannounced and started guilt-tripping us about why we had to officially get married. After about an hour of my future mother-in-law telling us how selfish we were for not wanting a formal wedding, I gave up. My rationale at the time was that I could be the bigger person and allow her mother to have the wedding she felt her daughter deserved. Unfortunately, this is where things started to go downhill. Once that was agreed upon, her mom basically went off the deep end and became a controlling and conniving bad person. We started by making a list of guests for the wedding. My wife and I wanted to keep the number of family members to a minimum and have most of our personal friends attend. However, her mother wanted almost none of our friends to come, at least from my family, but invited all her personal friends and relatives. We're talking about people my wife and I didn't even know, and a family neither of us had ever seen. What we envisioned as a wedding with less than 80 people suddenly turned into almost 300. And so it went. Every time we came up with what we wanted our wedding to be, it was quickly thrown out the window and replaced with what her mother wanted. To make matters worse, when my wife and I tried to stand our ground and fight for what we wanted, her mother took it as our ungratefulness and essentially guilt tripped my wife into submission. Not only did it make dealing with the wedding a real challenge, not to mention completely ruining any chance of looking back on our wedding in a positive light, it almost destroyed our relationship due to the insane level of stress we both experienced. Experiences relations with his mother. After finally realizing that our wedding wasn't about us at all, it was about her mom having the wedding she always envisioned for her daughter and showing off to her friends and family, we sat down and threatened to cancel everything at the last minute and run away if her mother doesn't stop being a completely bad person. When her mom realized we were serious, and she knew she would have to explain to all her friends why her daughter canceled the wedding within weeks of the ceremony, she wised up and bit her tongue while we changed her master plans. We ended up having the ceremony, had most of the things we had originally planned, but made concessions to her mother to avoid further nonsense. However, that didn't stop her from making a few unexpected and unknown changes to the ceremony and reception without our knowledge. I... Menu changes, decorations flower arrangements, party favors, and seating. I can't speak for my wife, but for me, it all ruined my wedding. Also, my wife no longer has the relationship with her parents that she had before all of this went down. She used to talk to her parents at least two, three times a week, and knew they were lucky to hear from her once every couple of months. Story 4. After a day of fitting wedding dresses, just me and my maid of honor, we met my family and future husband at my brother's house for dinner. While I'm showing my mom the picture of me in the dress that was on my girlfriend's phone, she gets a text from my fiancé. It's strange because I see him in the next room and my friend in the kitchen. Of course I read it, and it's a huge confession from him to her about how they fooled around a few weeks ago and he really regrets not moving on with her. He did not know that I had her phone in my hands. 
I just got up and walked ten feet to him, picked up her phone and looked into his eyes. The look on his face was priceless, and when I was able to talk myself and the whole family let them both verbalize it. We, so you can imagine, it was quite the confrontation. Needless to say, I don't speak to any of them anymore. Story 5. Lie, God lie. Here's a little background. My fiancé had baggage. I know it. Yes, I was going to be normal by being a stepmom to three kids, a daughter-in-law to two bad parents, and a daughter-in-law to a stupid messed up woman, and I knew I was going to bring home the bacon. I even bought a house big enough to accommodate him and three children, but he told me he never married his baby mama, and that he left my house at night to work the occasional night shift as a police officer. I asked to see the court order regarding the children so that I know what is going on. He hid from me the first page, on which was written, Judgment of Divorce. Therefore, when his parents commented on the second marriage, I was thrown for a loop. It was a pretty big thing to hide from my future wife in six months. I told him to leave, and he swore that was the only thing he lied about. I called his employer. It turns out he's not a cop either. So I had no idea where he went when he left the house I paid for and immediately went to get checked out. Yes, flipping lies. Story 6. I dated a girl who did this for a while. Turns out she was engaged to him but was dating me. We studied at the university and he studied at another school. I found out when he called and said he was coming to see me. I guess she went home for the weekend, which really meant going to his school and ending it all. And tell him about me. He didn't believe I didn't know because she wouldn't have done it herself. Story 7. My fiancé started an affair with her manager. I found conversations when she forgot to log out of Facebook one day. I worked on my peach for about a month to try and get her back, but eventually gave up. We broke up. She went on a couple of dates with him. He tried to cheat on her, but she stopped halfway. She was always very conservative about close relationships because she wasn't ready. He got angry and refused to talk to her anymore. This was about three days before I moved out of state. She begged me to come back. Failed. We were in the planning stages. We'd only been engaged for about a year and money was a bit of an issue. So luckily, apart from a few minor things, the ring was the most expensive thing at the time, we didn't have a lot of money to spend on it. TLDR, she was confused by someone who only wanted to flip, thus flipping us all. Story 8, I'm thinking of doing just that. My fiancé is very verbally abusive towards me, and I am losing the desire to talk or be intimate with her. We got engaged last November after dating for 2.5 years. But since moving in, she wants to argue with me multiple times a day and regularly tells me how she can always find something I do that pisses her off every day. She is 33 and has a PhD. I am 35 and own a video game business. I feel like I'm exploring new depths in my reservoir of patience, and I'm doing my best to diffuse her anger, which rarely works. Normally, I was a happy, kind person, but I feel like a wilted flower whose spirit has been drained by her negativity. I fully admit that I'm working up the courage to break off the engagement, move out of the house, and just enjoy some alone time, some peace, and then begin to heal and move on to a better life. Sorry for the rant. It's hard to admit this to friends and family as most of them think things are going well. Story 9. I have friends who had no choice but to cancel their wedding due to poor planning and trying to have their cake and eat it too. Here's what not to do when planning a wedding. 1. They decided to hold a wedding in the state. The place is four hours away. They also sent guests to save the dates. Two, after they had already paid the deposit and failed to anticipate what they needed for the wedding, the groom was fired for viewing prohibited photos at work. Three, due to new money problems, they decided to add more than half of the guests. People who received mass emails saying they were not invited due to financial reasons. Why they didn't call people personally is beyond me. Four, the day after the rejection letters were sent out, all the women still received invitations to the bachelorette party. All but one of the guests on the guest list were from the wedding. I have never seen so many failures in an hour. Five. The next day, everyone who was from the wedding received an invitation to the blessing wedding party. In short, a consolation party for not making it to the wedding. We are registered for giveaways here, yada, blah, blah. At this point, my wife was so angry. We didn't get invited to a wedding, where we had already put down a non-refundable hotel deposit. Then we got invited to a bachelorette party that cost $400 and a blessing party and we have to buy a gift. My wife made me write a nasty letter to the groom to stop inviting us to the wedding after canceling the wedding invitation. I heard that I was not the only one who wrote such a letter. Six days later, we are told that the blessing party and bachelorette party have been canceled because 90% of the guests have dropped out. The bride-to-be was so upset, confused, and so offended by the groom's decisions that she decided not to marry him.
She canceled the wedding altogether. Moral of the story. Plan your wedding properly and don't look at prohibited photos at work when you have a salary of over $80,000 a year trying to plan a destination wedding. Story 10. I called off my wedding, but it was too early, so I consider it more of an engagement call off. I realized that I was very unhappy, in many ways because I could no longer watch him drink. I later realized that there were other reasons, such as the mismatch in the value of money, different views on life, etc. It's a pity that we really loved each other. I just couldn't get it to work anymore. But I trusted myself and tried to convince him that he could be happier with someone else. I still miss him a lot, but we both have a much happier relationship now. Story 11. My best friend dated his high school sweetheart for 10 years. They were 25 when they got engaged. They were both each other's firsts. This guy did everything for her, and she was nice to him too, but she was very flirtatious and whatnot. One day, my buddy comes over and tells me his girlfriend is having dinner with the Tampa Bay Lightning hockey players. So I'm like, dude, hockey players are known to cheat on anything that moves. Are you worried? And he tells me she's just there to make friends with one of her friends. So the next day, we're all having dinner together. And I jokingly ask my friend of friends, so does Brad Richards have a big banana? My silly humor was picked up and well appreciated by this group of friends. And she nervously replies with a laugh, Yeah, Wild Hill, that was huge. So we laugh it off and carry on. Three months later, a week before their wedding day, she finally admits to him that she slept with Brad Richards. She told him this, You know when Will Deal asked me about Brad Richards' banana? Well, I didn't lie. I slept with him. I'm so sorry. Blah, blah, blah. It turns out that after dinner with the little hockey player, they all went to a hotel and had a dildo fest with two other girls and three players. Needless to say, my friend ditched her peach and now hates hockey with a passion. Edit. A friend of mine gave me some valuable advice on this. Never ask for details. You don't need to know what color the dildos were, what size or whether butt plugs were involved, and they were. Story 12. My mom was engaged to her high school sweetheart. Let's call him Bob. Bob came to her house two weeks before their wedding and told her that he had joined the army and was not ready for marriage. The next day, he flew to Germany. After 30 years and two divorces, my mother was single and had five children from two marriages. She meets her old high school sweetheart, Bob. He is also single and recently divorced. They fall in love and have been together ever since. Spoiler, his name is actually Bob. Story 13. Too many I know someone messages. I canceled my wedding. I called it off because I realized we weren't ready for the marriage to work. There are a number of skills that a couple must have before they can truly succeed in a relationship that will last a lifetime. These skills are pretty obvious. Compromise, forgiveness, sacrifice, and accepting the things you don't like but can never change. Shortly before the wedding, I realized that we did not have these skills. This made me extremely uncomfortable at the prospect of going through this. And in the end, I couldn't bring myself to start something that I knew couldn't last forever. Our mistake was getting engaged before we knew we had these skills, before we were ready. We collaborated for a long time with the idea that we would have time to master these skills before the big day finally arrived. But what we didn't realize was that it put a timer on our relationship, effectively turning it into a ticking time bomb. When the day came, we were either ready or having a really bad time. Edit. Many thanks to whoever donated the gold. You are all very kind. Story 14. Many reasons to list. She was a wonderful person, but she froze and stopped talking to me. Later, she left me for one of our friends. We were very close, and it was terrible for me that she couldn't come and talk to me, that she didn't trust me enough to sit down and talk about everything. Maybe she got scared, or I just wasn't attracted to her anymore, I don't know for sure. The pain of that loss still haunts me, and I still feel the craziness that comes from time to time. But it's been almost five years, and I'm finally feeling like myself again. I hope she's happy. All my friends think I hate her. I don't hate her, I just hope she was able to find what she needed. I talked to her for a while after we broke up. We were friends again, but I couldn't deal with the guy she left me for because he was a person who thought he had done nothing wrong when in, in fact, he helped push us to our breaking point, pretending to help us through hard times while acting as a wedge between us. To this day, every time I see him, I feel the urge to tear him apart, a quiet anger in my head that I ignore because I know it's not worth it. I don't hate her. She apologized and tried to help me even though I was almost crazy with grief for months after our breakup. It was definitely the hardest thing I've ever been through in my life. I can accept death, but the hardest part is knowing that she is alive and well and that she is no longer a part of my life in any capacity. Story 15. 
he was going to get married in March 2012, and in January of the same year he canceled the marriage. It basically came down to disagreements about what we want out of life. I was 23 at the time. I would have been 24 at the wedding. She was 27. She wanted children, like almost immediately. I told her we needed to wait on it. I'm still in college. I wanted to find a job, a house, and more first. But she wasn't willing to compromise at all. She wanted us to have kids before she turned 30, so within a year or two of the wedding, and I can't be ready for kids until I'm 25, 26, especially since I'm still working in college. This caused more and more rifts between us, and I knew that if we got married, either I would get what I wanted, and we would wait for children, and she would resent me, or she would get what I wanted. She wanted to, and we would have children, and I would resent her, and we would have a child or children we are not ready to take care of. I still miss her every day, and always wonder if I made the right decision. Story 16. It's a long story, I know, but what you're about to read is the story of how I saved my life. I was in a relationship with my ex for seven years when we got engaged. I had just finished high school and we had been together for so long, so it was the next step. Important note. I am Costa Rican. Women are raised here to be wives. Even educated women with college degrees are expected to be quiet, sweet girls who adore and serve their husbands. So that's exactly what I did during my relationship with this turd. I was very young when I met him, so it gave him time to mold me to his liking. It got to the point where I think it borders on cruelty. For example, when I went somewhere, I had to call him and ask him which way to go, or I could only go to the movies with him. If I did something without him, he would get mad at me. I often had to dumb down, because he said I often insulted him with my comments. And I did it all. I did it, not just because I thought it was normal, but because I honestly and wholeheartedly believed that this was this, that I had to accept it, because it was the only chance I had to be loved. You see, I was never a pretty girl. I'm not ugly, but I'm not pretty either. And I have a personality. Boy, I have... And this is a bad quality for a girl. So I fooled myself, suppressed my personality, and played along. In any case, we got engaged and decided to get married in a year. After a couple of months, I found out that he was cheating on me. We quarrel, he apologizes, I forgive him. He then proceeds to be a complete cow over the following months, becoming more and more controlling and just being downright evil. And I took it all. I remember one evening I was out somewhere with him and some friends, and that day he was particularly angry with me. We left and got in the car and I just started sobbing and he apologized. He always did after he was a banana. And I told him, I always thought that when I got married, I would fall in love. And it was true, I didn't love him anymore. I slowly fell out of love with him, and these words at that moment became the first rung on the ladder that left him. Then I got a job. He wasn't happy about it because with work comes independence and a sense of self-worth, things I needed. I began to feel that there was a life without him, and then I found out that he had some loans that he did not tell me about. And that was all. This was the last straw. Something came over me that I can't explain. I suddenly gathered the courage to leave him. I decided there was no more forgiving. I called it off. We broke up. It was the hardest thing I had to do in my life. It was I who stood up for myself. It was me against everyone in my life. The invitation has been sent. The seats are booked. I did not give the fudge. My family was devastated, but I was happy. Oh, I was so happy. And everyone was so angry with me because I was happy. But they didn't know. They had no idea what I'd been going through for the past few years, so they thought it wasn't right for me to be so happy. After that, I did things unheard of for women in my family. I became independent got an apartment, traveled alone, started reading and listening to the music I wanted, and actually allowed myself to be myself. I lost friends and family after this decision, but it was worth it. Now I am such a happy person, I am almost 30 and I am successful in my work. I'm still hoping that a man will come along who likes smart, independent, and confident women who will love me. But I've also come to terms with the fact that it might not happen. I'm happy and proud of myself, and I'm truly living the best years of my life, and that's the most important thing. Story 17. An old friend of mine called off her wedding because he found out she messed with some guy at his bachelorette party last weekend. He waited until the wedding day to call off the wedding because he wanted her to explain it to her family, most of whom flew to the city for the wedding. I was one of his best men, so instead of exchanging vows, we all walked him out on the town while he was in his tuxedo. It was still a pretty depressing night, and he was very concerned about it for months. Story 18. I don't think I've seen this before. An emotional novel. We were together for seven years, and in a few months we got married. We have already bought a house and started connecting our lives. She was emotionally distant for a while, but I ignored it like a fool in love. Later I noticed that she spends a lot of time talking to a guy she met in World of Warcraft. 
She also accepted phone calls from acquaintances alone. I called her and the next day our wedding was called off. We bought our house during the mortgage bubble, and now I'm stuck with an underwater mortgage on a house that has lost 50% of its value. I also have a ring. It's been almost five years and I still don't know what to do with it. Story 19. My best friend canceled her wedding nine days before the big day. She discovered he had drained their joint wedding account by playing online poker after he drained his personal account. She explained that the feeling of losing the down payment on the house, as well as the food money, was nothing compared to what she felt when he asked her for her mother's inheritance, she had passed a year ago, to pay it off. More gambling debts. No apologies, no guilt, just more money. She left and eight years later happily married to another guy with one boy and a bun in the oven. Story 20. My friend was engaged to a girl. He was a typical SAP. He had been on literally dozens of first dates from Occupid and had no luck with women. A really nice guy, but totally unsocial. She turned out to be a pathological liar. She was an army veteran. She practiced underwater knife fighting. She came from old money. But some of her money was spent on an incredibly lavish wedding ceremony. She had a daughter, or maybe she didn't have one, or maybe the girl was her niece or her friend's child. She was the military police. The lie became so strong that she decided to move across the country in the middle of the night with my friend to avoid a warrant for her arrest. Fraud and impersonating a police officer. She told him that there was a job waiting for them both in her family business. He was working on his doctoral thesis, but dropped out at her suggestion so he didn't work at all and they were broke. So they moved in with her mom and neither of them found work. I think to distract him from that fact, she told him she was pregnant. Surprise. He suggested. The ultrasound photo she showed him appeared on the first page of Google image search results for ultrasound. He finally left, called his father to get money to fly home. A few weeks later, she called him from jail to talk about their baby and how she would get parole if he didn't come back to her. The woman, she was crazy. Story 21. We were both quite young. I was 21, he was 23. We were responsible, self-sufficient. We bought a house together. He was my first kiss and I was in earshot. We were engaged for four years in a relationship, and then things started to fall apart. He began to control himself. No longer wanted me to go out with my friends, or even with my sister. When it got to the point where I told him we just couldn't afford a new TV or something else, he sulked and loved it. If I wasn't completely happy, he wouldn't talk to me. I thought about calling it quits when he decided he wanted to try anal, whether I wanted to or not. All I could think about through the pain and tears was that it would only get worse. I was devastated that the man I loved just kept going while I begged him to stop. Breaking off the engagement was the best decision I ever made. I have regained all my confidence and am happier than ever in this relationship. I will never settle again. I deserve better. Story 22. You know that show, Bridezilla? It was roughly like that. Yes, yeah, sorry, this is a my friend story. Well, this bakery had a policy of not making wedding cakes because brides tend to fret over them, no matter how perfect they are and demand changes on the wedding day that have nothing to do with the original description of the cake. Although my friend's fiancé was friends with the owner of the bakery, so decided to make this to be nice. Part of her wedding gift, a free cake. The bride went absolutely over the cake. She screamed and screamed and cried over this cake. It was the day before, so a friend trying to be nice decided to make the cake from scratch and went up that night working on it. Myself, the bride and groom were at the bakery the next day to pick up the cake and she got so mad she picked it up and threw the cake over the counter where there were several customers screaming about how her friend had ruined her wedding and how horrible the cake was. Then she turned to the groom and said, Now what are we going to do with the wedding? In which the groom replied, What wedding? I wish I had a camera, uncle. They were both, and it was a neighborhood. So the store almost turned into an episode of Maury or Jerry Springer. Story 23. I had to withdraw mine because the man I wanted to spend the rest of my life with or so I thought, decided to sit me down the night before and tell me all about the dates and habits he had during our relationship together. He said that if he doesn't open up now, he won't be able to live with himself. After the list was ready, I cried my eyes out. He said something like, well, I didn't think you'd take it that hard, seriously. We were going to have a big wedding, although I really didn't want it to be that big. I guess it's weird, but I never imagined my wedding growing up like other little girls, so I had to call tons of people and tell them what it was disabled, listening to them try to comfort me on the phone and crying every time I lifted up to the sky. He told me he didn't want to call anyone because he was so upset that I was saying no. He didn't want to see me anymore. It worked because I found someone who really loves me, and we have been married for 3.5 years and have a beautiful 2.5-year-old son.
and he never cheated on me. I never thought I could trust again, but I'm still slowly getting over that fear after all these years. That was 12 years ago. Story 24. My fiancé refused when she found out that I was not rich. Apparently there's a guy with the same name as me who's the heir to this huge fortune, while I'm just some idiot from a lower middle class family. She came into my life like a dream, and I was so taken with her that I thought it was like a fantasy come true. When she met my family and found out who they were, she literally ran away from home. I had to track her down and find out after the fact that she was trying to find someone she thought was an heir. I grew up a lot that year. Luckily for me, she didn't get what she wanted either. The boy she was looking for turned out to be a boy, and now she waits tables for a living. Story 25. 35 years ago, I did it. I was a young naval officer about to marry a girl I had fallen in love with in college. Three days before the event, I caught a cold and canceled it. It wasn't because I changed my mind about her. It was a stupid idea that I thought I could either be a good husband or a good submarine officer. I didn't think I could do both. About nine months later, she called me, about 1,000 miles away, and found out she had a new boyfriend. It just disappointed me. I did my best to regain her confidence, but it took almost a year. During that year, I was stationed at a submarine base in Bangor, Washington, and she was 2,400 miles away in Cincinnati, Ohio, with that rich POS guy harassing her every day. It really affected me. I had many sleepless nights imagining the worst, but I didn't give up. A few months before we were scheduled to move to the first submarine squadron at Pearl Harbor, I took a chance and went to Cincinnati. I convinced her to come back to Bangor with me and made the trip through the Southwest and then back down the California coast along the Pacific Ocean. It was very much like a honeymoon because I could do it on my limited salary, and it was unforgettable. When we got to Washington, Mount St. Helens erupted. We were on the highway about 40 miles from it when it blew. The sky just turned, and the mud flows washed away the bridges to the north of us. We were diverted along the coast and finally made it to Bangor. She had to return to Cincinnati, but this time with a plan to return to Washington. When she flew back, we escaped with the justice of the peace. It was almost 33 years ago. We have three sons and couldn't be happier? Our boys have already grown up, and I'm not far from retirement. Marrying her was the best and smartest thing I ever did. Story 26. Together for four years, engaged for three months. He thought it was time to tell me that he was attracted to children besides grown women a few days before rehearsal. Maybe he thought I was too distracted to plan. Maybe he couldn't take it anymore. I don't know. He didn't talk to me for days after that. So confused and confused to the core, I told my dad who told me to stop it, which I did, in two weeks. He effectively disappeared, making everyone think he had cold feet, then came back like it was fine, if a little weird. It wasn't pretty. Edit. Okay. Obviously some people think I'm Goebbels or some cow, so I'd like to clear some things up first. First, pedophilia is not comparable to on the grounds that A, children cannot consent, and B, it is paraphilia. It's not a fetish, it's not passion, it's not attraction, and it is insulting that you can think otherwise. Second, I'm not a terrible person if I refuse to commit to a lifelong relationship with someone I can't trust. I did not stop him, I let him go. As far as I know, he's still alive and able to date other women, women who are willing to take the risk of raising children with him. Third, I know the difference between a child molester and a pedophile. I ended it because he was a pedophile. If he really was a child molester, I'd take his peach to the station in no time. Story 27 so my friend will say that Becca was supposed to get married last year on August 10th. I went to her wedding party where she raved over and over that she was getting married to, say, Mike in a little over a week, and how lucky she was, and that none of us were as lucky as she was. Yeah, she's so full of herself. So about four days before the wedding, she posted on her Facebook that the wedding was postponed, and then a few hours later that it was postponed indefinitely. It turns out another ex-girlfriend of hers had a video of her boyfriend and Mike being intimate. Mike found out that Becca knew, took all his things and left. About a month later, Mike is in a car accident and claims he has amnesia for all the events and thought they were married. He never hit his head in the accident, so the doctors say he's full of crap with everyone. Becca, being stupid and Mormon needing a man, decides to go back to him. She is now six months pregnant. They are not married and he still claims to have forgotten everything including the close relationship he had with another guy. Story 28. I went on my first date at 23. I had never been in a relationship before and thought everything was going well. About three months later, we got pregnant. She told me that she was on the pill and that she might not even be able to get pregnant. It was a shock to my system, and we broke up briefly after the announcement. But we got back together and really tried to make it work. My daughter was born in August, shortly before our anniversary. 
My daughter is the best person in the world, and she has done more for me than she can imagine. I learned so much about responsibility and being an adult because of her. Shortly after my daughter was born, her mother started pushing marriage, and I saved up money to buy a ring. I proposed and things got better for a while, but the situation was too difficult. We had nothing in common except our daughter. Soon she again abused me verbally and psychologically. But since I had never been treated this way, I did not understand what I was doing wrong. I started seeing a therapist who helped me realize that I was not in a healthy relationship. Finally, after an argument where she threatened me with physical violence, I realized that things were too toxic to continue. I definitely looked like the bad guy, but I had to make the best choice for the future of everyone involved. The hardest part was coming to the conclusion that this situation around my daughter would actually be worse for her than we would be apart. Story 29. Religion once helped me a lot. I was engaged to a girl and we lived together, but we had known each other for less than a year. She was a true nymphomaniac, and I was fine with that at 22. We went to meet the preacher who was going to marry us, and he suggested that we end our intimate relationship two months before the wedding to make the night more special. So we did. We found out pretty quickly that we had very little in common outside of the bedroom, and I wisely decided to cancel the case. Shortly after that, I met my soulmate, and we have been married for 19 years. Story 30. I called off my wedding three months before it happened. Why? I was 17 years old. I would have been 18 at the time of the wedding, about to marry a 26-year-old man who had been dating me for three years. I was a victim about to marry her abuser. An engagement ring, which I later found out was fake. He has money. A lot of things, but it didn't matter to me, was to buy my consent, silence, whatever, as he stuck his banana into anything that moved. He was an alcoholic, a narcissist. Seriously, I wasn't 14 to look like 18. I was 14 years old. I looked like a 12-year-old. I loved him because I thought he was saving me from my terrible situation with my family. My mom and I moved in with her boyfriend, but we found out too late that he was a rapist. He would take me away from it, even if it was only for a short time. I was so confused. I ended up living in a boarding house when things finally fell apart in my abusive family because, of course, I was 17, and he didn't want me to move out until I was 18. His career depended on a flashy image. I became pregnant. My pregnancy ended violently, resulting in the stillbirth of my daughter. Despite all this, I loved him. But he began to find fault with my appearance. I was gaining too much weight, even though I was a normal weight for my age height. I gained thighs and breasts, so we talked about diet. I stopped eating. I drank water when I was hungry. Everything had to be low-fat, fat-free, low-calorie, no-calorie, and sugar-free. It worked. I went from healthy to underweight. What made me realize what I wanted was a box of chicken wings. I eventually moved back in with my mother after she was able to escape from her ex. We lived near an indoor flea market farmer's market that had the most amazing food vendors. I love food and this diet was killing me. I flipped miserably. So I decided to have a cheat day and went and ordered a box of hot wings from the chicken joint at the farmer's market. Watching my favorite movie and eating my favorite food made me realize that extreme dieting would always be my life. I also realized that it was wrong for him to want me to be so unhealthy. I was tired all the time, cold all the time, hungry all the time. I decided, happily munching on that box of wings, I was done. I called him, told him I was done. It took me another three years to really get it done, but a very expensive wedding was done and finished. He never returned the deposits. It took me almost ten years to realize that he wanted me to look like a fourteen-year-old forever. I've also always been dismissive of the age difference, citing the fact that I'm mature for my age. I realize now that it didn't matter. I was a child. Story 31. My old boss was engaged. You could tell he wasn't too enthusiastic about hooking up, but instead of using his words, he used his banana and spoiled a woman on his bachelor party, Irk it was Shagalufu, and told his bride it was close two weeks before the wedding itself. After she took him to the doctor to get tested for STDs, she called off the wedding, unsurprisingly. What angered him the most was that he was not returned the deposit at the reception desk. What a guy.